anything would deal with anything outside of this country. You got to become incognito because that's not your destiny. Your destiny is to become God. Y'all all right? Yes, sir. Okay, we're going to get into all that. I'm going to post some libations. Get the gods in. And um, we're going to set up overhead later on. And um, we got some, got a lot of stuff. Um, we're going to post some libations. And um, um, this is Canadian Hunter. I'm dealing with anything the hunter. The hunter is the uh, Yoruba god Oshosi. Oshosi is the hunter. And the hunter is also Orion. So the hunter is also Osiris, Orion's belt. And we're going to deal with a lot with Orion and Sirius. And we're going to go into the science of Ramadan, which, is, which came out of ancient Chimney. You see, the priests only ate after sundown 365 days. It's just they set aside a, a festival period when Sirius was in the sky in the summer for the rest of the people in ancient Kemet, you see what I'm saying, to practice. And then later on, they put the, uh, but, but how the Muslims got it, remember now, that, that Arabia ain't up but Northeast Africa. You see what I'm saying? So a lot, a lot of those customs that the Muslims have, you see what I'm saying, the stuff that came straight out of Kemet, came straight out of Africa. That's why you see Star Sirius in the Quran. This is the God who created both male and female from one singularly ejaculated semen. This is the God of Sirius. Now in Egypt, the Lord of Sirius is Osiris. You see what I'm saying? As well as Isis, the goddess of Sirius, stone sea. The throne, her thing is called the throne of Sirius. You see what I'm saying? This is the Lord of Syria. That's in the surah of the star. There's a surah of the cow. That's Heru Hathor. They got the surah of the moon. That's Tahuti and Kunsu. You see. Remember now, Muhammad couldn't read or write to the day he died. So the person who put that down was a literate person. We know now that Bilal wrote the Quran. You see. Bilal wrote the Quran. That was the person. That was, and they would call him a slave later on. But if he was a slave, why the hell he was able to go back to Ethiopia? You know, he returned to Ethiopia. They say where the, the place of Cush, where man is never wrong. You see what I'm saying? So we're going to pull libations, and I'm going to go into my ordeal. Um, uh, my ordeal, that, but like I say, what we're dealing with now. It's not necessarily you gaining knowledge to know who you are. We got to find out where we fare as gods. We've been saying we are gods. So it's got to become a time where we go, well, wait a minute, how do we put this to use? Or how do we tap into that field? So this is where we are. Now, we laid in the game for the simple fact I've been doing this for 19 years. I've been, been studying this stuff over 20 some years. So it's got to come a time where we say, well, where does all this shit lock in? And that's where we are. That's the destiny. You see, that's the destiny. So I'm going to tell you a series of, of, of things and events that's happening. You see, the events that's happening is going to go deeper into this type of stuff. And one's got something to do with my mother. I wish it wasn't her that went through this because the simple fact is, you know, because people go, oh, he talking about his mama. That's, a, you know, you know, like that. I wish it was somebody else. Then I can say, you know, I don't have a connection with this particular person. But it didn't happen to nobody. It happened, it happened to my mother. And this type of thing, what I'm trying to say here is, most people, when your people die, you ain't hear from their ass never again. Mm -hmm. You, every now and then, you experience them in dreams. And you ever dream about your parents or dream about somebody? When you do that, that's a visitation. They're coming to you for a reason. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? They're coming to you for a reason. But most of you never, what we have to find out now is, if life, if this is just one segment of life, then what happens to you when you go on to another portion? They say, well, he just, you just got another assignment. It might not be in the physical world. You see what I'm saying? The physical world is the lowest world, and the physical world is the unreal world. It doesn't even exist. So if the physical world don't even exist, it's unreal. 
And what happens when you gain, come and you raise up out of that? And there's a whole heavens and cosmos. What, what, do you, what, do you, what do we do? What do those people do when they leave this particular plane of existence and go to another reality? You, you said another reality. So that's what we're going to get into. We gotta, see, we, we're sophisticated enough now to track shit other than the five senses. You see, you, other than the five senses. So we got to break these particular mysteries down. There's things that's happening. You see, there's things that's happening. You know, and these people have other assignments. I was talking to Martin Luther King when his wife died. He said, oh, yeah. That's a long time ago. Talking about his, his existence here. And he gave me some long ass name of what he was now. And a whole nother feel of what he's doing now. See what I'm saying? So we can't track this type of stuff. We're going to get into that today. But now I hit home with some stuff that happened to my mother. So what I'm saying again, we got to, we have to push this thing along so that we can begin to track ourselves as what we are turning into or what, or what we have already become. You see, let me pull some libations. So, so now we're going to deal with why we worship the ancestors. But when we was worshiping the ancestors, we was actually worshiping the gods. And the gods used to be, our, the gods ended up being our ancestors. You see, that's when the Egyptians say, well, yeah, they said, we, we had about 11,000 years of rule. And they say, well, the Greeks said, well, who used to rule before that? They said, that's when a whole bunch of gods used to rule. So who was the bunch of gods? We were the gods before we fell into the physical. This is just our physical existence. Before that, we used to rule on the God realm. So that's what we got to get back to. So to deal with this, this all started. This all started, well actually it started last year with the oil spill. The oil spill was done on purpose by BP. It was done on purpose. They blew the, they blew the record and all that kind of stuff. But you know, the BP people all cashed their money in on Wall Street. They all sold their stocks. What, about two weeks or a month before the oil spill? All of the big things, they, they, they sold all their stocks. Okay. They blew the oil spill. They kept you seeing the oil floating out for almost two, close to three months. Then they kept it. Then it was all based on the cleanup. So what they did in the cleanup effort, in the cleanup effort, what they did was they decided that the government said, well, we're going to we let BP clean it up. So BP can do what they want to do. What BP had done was that BP had created a dispersant. This all dispersant is called correction. It's a BP, they, BP owns correction. So they blew them up the oil well to contaminate the water, which is also in the book of Revelations. It's called a contaminated water. That's something in the future. That happened in, 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 in 2010. You see what I'm saying? Also, the book called Egyptian Origins of the Book of Revelations, put out by a guy by the name of Mom. It's that guy's name. Called Egyptian Origins of the Book of Revelations, and it was put out by a guy called. John C. Pippin. Uh, John C. Pippin. And they have it in there about the contaminated waters that they got off the uh, pyramid text of the uh, 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 Papyrus of Ani. So, what happened was they blew it up, then they started dropping this correction, which is the dispersants to clean it up. Now, the dispersants to clean it up. It already showed you in the 1996-97 movie, Dean Coons' Phantoms. Write that down. Dean Coons' Phantoms is the name of the movie. Now, this melanated entity 
came and hit this town. It was a phantom, it was a melody. What is a melanin is a, is, 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 is a mysterious flowing entity. It is actually God incarnate. And it hit this town and then also the United States government came in. And in order to destroy this black substance, first of all, it took over this black man's body and said, the black man said, study my skin. Write the gospel, but do not leave. So it was a black substance that took over this brother's body. And he said, study my skin. So how did they kill it? They killed it with some substance, some dispersants that they used to clean up the Exxon Valdez oil spill. And it neutralizes carbon. Melanin is carbon. Oil is nothing but carbon. So they use, so they kill this melanated deity by using the dispersants that help clean up the Exxon Valdez oil spill in Alaska. Okay? Now, um, Dean Coons wrote this book in 1983. Exxon Valdez didn't even start, it was 1989. So they added that in there by the time the movie came out. Okay, so check it out. Check it out. This new correction, they dropped in Africa. After they dropped it in Africa, the entire continent of Europe banned this thing, including England. It's banned. But BP dropped it in the waters here. And they're going to drop it for the next 10 years. They're going to drop it for the next 10 years. So what happens is this. A guy came all the way. There was a guy that lives in Brazil. He's never been in this country. He's in his 70s or 80s. He's a babalao uh, under the Canton Blaze system. That's a form of, you know, Europe. You, know, you got Canton Blaze, you got Santeria in the Caribbean. And, and, and all, you know, in Latin America. You got Canton Blade and Kim Bonda in Brazil. So this guy from Brazil calls and says, calls and says, black people in America, he's never been here, should not eat nothing out of the sea. Hmm. Nothing out of the sea. So what happens is this. Now, I'm going to tell you, I got to tell you, I got to thank you. you, can, you get in, I'm going to give you my number when we put it up on the thing. You can get in contact with me, and, and, and you can purchase this, you can purchase this DVD on the oil spill. In the DVD, they say, well, if BP blew up their own oil record, why did they do it? So they got all these people from around the world talking about this. So when they want to say something that's devastating and give you the real truth, they go to a guy with his back looking in a computer on one picture, still picture. You don't know who he is. And this is what he says. He said, shit. He said they want to kill off what they call, what the Illuminati call useless eaters. He said, we want to, they want to kill off the useless eaters. He said, what? He said, black people from around the Gulf Coast. He said, most of them, a lot of them moved to Texas. A lot of them moved to Atlanta, but he said, a lot of them moved to Texas, which is concerned with that. The reason why Texas brought them in, because that's a state that executes people. You see? So a lot of them moved to Texas. You see what I'm saying? The first thing they did when they got to Texas, is the regular black people from Houston committed crimes? They hushed that up 
and bring all the crimes that regular black people that was committing. Because we can commit some damn crimes now. Oh, these beautiful people. Yeah, let them motherfucker break in your goddamn house. <laughs> you ever had your shit broke into? That's a dehumanizing feeling when you your, come your TV set going. That's a dehumanizing shit. It takes you a couple months to recuperate from that shit. You know it ain't nothing but a damn nigga now. <laughs> so the black people in Houston was committing the crimes, they was blaming it all on the people from Katrina. You see what I'm saying? Now, the guy said, no, they're trying to kill off the useless eaters. The useless eaters. That's what they're trying to kill off. See if I'm not still in the view. Hmm? Yeah. They're trying to kill off the useless eaters. Now, let me explain what this thing does. This correction, and they got it on the tape, this correction, It, it's amazing how you didn't see a whole lot of fish dead. They, they had the tsunami and it had thousands of fish dead. You didn't see but what happened was is this correction, it's a phantom enough that the fish can eat it and don't die. But if you eat any of the seafood, it attacks the melanin. Mm. So you were eating, so you eat this stuff that attacks the melanin, this corrects it. So the first thing that happens is you, you develop a cough. Anybody have had, had coughs during the, during the winter and then in the summer came, this coughs didn't go away? And you still got mucus and the mucus didn't go away? Oh, you know, you know, you, you know, the winter you have, we're gonna have mucus, and you know, when June and July come, you know, your mucus is supposed to clear up and all that shit, but now they got mucus that's not going away. So when the guy called and said, Nobody should eat any fish or anything out of the sea. Because what it is, is they're dropping the correction. And because they let BP clean it up, BP is going to drop the correction for the next 10 years, and it's a slow kill. Mm -hmm. So what it is here, you, you, you will first come down with, uh, with mucus. It's a slow kill. Now, the people in the Gulf Coast are getting sick immediately. So I came down with this cough in January. I said, ah, oh, you know, whatever, you know. No, I think it was like January or March or whatever. And then July came, I was still coughing. So the first thing my queen did is Yemen y'all, the goddess Yemen y'all came from and said, tell Bobby, don't get off the seafood. And then the guy called, the guy from Brazil, he got a bobble out that was over here, that called and said, well, uh, well, he knows somebody, one of the Bible hours is in contact with somebody over here, called and said, um, the, the other guy said, don't eat nothing from the sea. So what it is, is this correction, what it does is it gets in the fish, and it is directly designed to destroy the melanin, but it's a slow kill. So what the spirit world say, no, we're going to give it to you, because what it is, when you got a higher sensitive level, see, I have what is called a, an illuminated voice box, it's the stroke chakra. That way I can, I can go into, a, I have gone into gymnasiums and auditoriums and spoke and didn't need a microphone. That's because it's an illuminated heart chakra, a throat chakra. So, but what happens here is when something is, uh, when something is heightened, you're going to first be sensitive to things, it's going to show up, so the mucus started coming and I developed this cough. That's because my throat chakra that is on a high level was sensitive to it. So therefore, they were saying, no, we're going to let you see. Because the other people, this is slow kill. They're not going to catch on like that because of the vibration a lot of people is so low. And also, um, so I started coughing and stuff, and I sort of got off the fish. They started taking my appetite, so I went through a form of Ramadan in June. Well, I, I just couldn't eat nothing until after sundown. Then I went July, whole month. Couldn't eat nothing after sundown. Then I went to Ramadan. I said, well, I'm already practicing it. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't eat nothing. Start the process of elimination. I had gotten off of beef in 2000 
in, 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 in 2010, you know, start getting off stuff like soy, soy is mucus forming, and stuff like that. Soy gives you a brain poison, <clears throat> calcifies the pineal gland. That's why it's in all the health food stores. Mm. And most health food products are made out of salt. You see, so, um, so what happened was, so what happened was, start getting off all the stuff, got off the meat. Now, I was a vegetarian in most of the 90s. 97, I went in celebration and got back on the meat. <laughs> but you know something happened? I was vegetarian about seven years and I headed out for Kentucky Fried Chicken. I ate that chicken that first time. Tell you what happened. It was in 97. I was a vegetarian. You see what I'm saying? Went and got back on the meat. The day I ate that Kentucky Fried Chicken for the first time, do you know I came down with paralysis? I was on the floor and I couldn't move my arms or my legs for about 20 minutes. That's how much the body went in shock with that foreign agent and that poison. Now remember what Scott Whitaker said, that he had a guy that worked for Kentucky Fried Chicken, and they had to go and take him to get, get, get the chicken from the corporate plant, and when they went, went to go get the chicken, they came out, the people had on suits like oil spill suits or uh, uh, radiation suits. They had on radiation suits, and they had the chicken that had a skull and crossbone on the damn box. And they pushed that shit out to him. Well, I can imagine when I ate that stuff, I, I, I went into paralysis for about 20 minutes. But it was all she wrote after that. So I, for 12 years, for 12 years, I was back on the meat. Well, this is when I knew something was wrong, when I went vegan, and I was still producing mucus. The spirit was like, no, because I got off the meat. So I was off the meat two, two weeks, and the angel showed up. I'm going to the science of that. The angel showed up. I'm going to show you what that's all about.
stuff like that. Mm. Uh, uh, bell loops. Now, and so the key here was, so, you know, so I'm back vegan. You see what I'm saying? Now, this is the point about it was. So the, the car went away and all of that went away. But the point I'm trying to make here is I had to go through this particular ordeal. Now, one of the ordeals I had to go through, and this is the crux of the lecture we're going to be talking about tonight, was I entered into a, a realm, an angelic realm. We're going to go into the science today. And I'm going to tell you who the angels are and why they're the most powerful. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you who they are. We're going to go into the science. So I entered into this particular realm, and in that realm, you can't have nothing, no dead carcass product. So in so many words, they took me through hell just to get me off the meat again, because I made a vow in the damn 2000 or the 90s, I'd never get off meat and I will never fast again. <laughs> when I got through, I got off the meat, and I went on a fast for three weeks, and I was going to go you know, fast food, because you don't, you don't, you know, you lose your appetite. So I was gonna go to my birthday until my ass disappeared. <laughs> you see, and I said, wait a minute, I'm looking like this concentration camp on my and, and so she said, and so then I said, no, your ass is malnutrition now. <laughs> but what it is is that what happened was that this here. So a sister called the other night and said, we, uh, one sister called and called. Called Miss Blue on the blog talk and said, Well, uh, we don't know what we think. Is Bobby dead? So Linda was like, No, because she, she went through the vegan thing too. You see, and so they say, See, this is no, he went through a transformation. So you were sensing because you, on this round, you were when you ain't, you ain't feeling something, and he's going through a transformation. It is a form of death, but what happened was, what, what happened with the fast is this here. That's why they say Jesus went on the fast for 40 days. You see what I'm saying, like that. And he saw God or heard God or whatever type of thing. Well, that's a sign. The Jesus is you. You are the Jesus. There ain't no man in no desert in Jerusalem. That's you. He took your work like that historical bullshit that didn't happen. That's you. This is the whole story of Jesus is what you went through. So a death, you say the death on the cross. You take your hand, you like this, and hold it out. That's your cross. The cross is the human body. In Egypt, it's called the mummy. Death in the mummy. Osiris is in the death in the mummy. You see what I'm saying? So, um, so what's happening here is when you go on the fast and your, your body's used to getting nutrition, and then what starts happening, after about that third week, your body starts eating itself. It starts taking all the shit it can do for nutrition. So they found my ass. <laughs> and they start eating my fucking ass. I said, wait a minute, I, I don't want to be down to do some bones back there. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? I said, I'm going to try to wait like this. No, you can't do that because remember now, that's the pregnancy from the Buddha thing. This is what the yogis go through with the stomach. Remember, you, you, had, you had the stomach before you started gaining weight. That's the thing. When you, when, because what happened here is that knowledge is food. Melanin is a, is, is, is a cosmic records, and it's nutrition. Melanin has stores knowledge, and the knowledge is a nutrition. It's a new protein. It's a new protein. So what they're saying here is, what's going to happen to you as the gods, there's a protein in you that's developed, and you eat from that. That's that mana from heaven. But that's melanin. Melanin has proteins in it. It has everything in the universe. You see, in the universe, so what happened was, because I was gaining so much knowledge, my stomach started getting bigger based on the proteins. The proteins. You see what I'm saying? There's a whole thing they did on Egypt. The Egyptologists came together to put all this, this stuff. But they, 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 the Egyptologists are under mandate for the government to say that they can't tell anybody the shit is metaphysics. Or just the pharaohs being dead and all this kind of stuff here. So what they did is they took all of the research they did for the last hundred years, gave it to a woman, and she went in and in the early 2000s wrote these texts. It's called the Isis thesis. What's that woman's name? Huh? Uh, Judy, Judy K. King. And in there they say, well, to get to this God level, the race is going to produce a protein 
The DNA is going to produce a protein. That's the form of the melanin getting to a godlike state. A godlike state. So in order to do this, the spirits, in order to do this, when I entered into that realm, what had happened was, let me explain how that was doing. All the correction and all that shit with the fish and all that, and it's a slow kill, so you got to get off the seafood. That shit is dangerous, and they're dumping that shit now to this day. They're dumping it to this day. It's, it's, you see, it's all the same government shit. You see what I'm saying? It's correct, and they own it. Let me tell you, they dumped this shit in Africa. You remember the Africans was dying with AIDS? But they had a sister who grew up in a voodoo community from the homie. So she wanted the original shit. And she, she diagnosed people based on the spirit world. So people would come to her and she could tell you what's going on and diagnose your shit in the spirit realm. You know, they got people that can take their hand and stick in your body and pull out all kind of disease and shit. You see what I'm saying? All kind of diseases. So I can cure you with just some, just some liquor. Just the right kind of liquor can cure you. Can, can cure you. So, this woman can diagnose you. They, so this woman, they brought this woman from Africa in 2006. Brought her to the Mohai School of Medicine, Dr. Uh, um, what's my man that used to work at Mohai School of Medicine? Um, Dr. Charles French. So he, he made, it, made it possible. So we all went to see this woman. So she had a little dog baby in her hand. It was a white dog baby, but you know, we got to realize now. Like, see, the Africans don't look at race the way we look at race. They look at people from other parts of Africa as race. That's why they go to war with other Africans. See, what happens when you live on a continent where 90% of the people are dark skinned? And you are not a minority. So she had a dog baby, you know, have a white dog baby. And people kept saying, you know, why you got that white dog baby she's holding on her hand? And she was like, she was like in her late 50s. She said, well, that was one of my twins. That was my twin sister that died. When I was born, when I was born, I had a twin sister that didn't make it here. And so this is her. Now that's the story of Kunsu had a, a sister, a brother that died and didn't make it into this world. So it's like a shadow. It's like another, it's like another double spirit that's attached to you. It also happened, um, uh, Krishna had a, a, a brother named Balarama that died and didn't make it in this world. So the doll baby, so the doll baby she had represented that other child or whatever. It's a spirit thing. So she diagnosed all these types of diseases. People come from all over the world. So somebody asked her about AIDS. She said, and she was like late 50s, early 60s. She said, I done diagnosed every disease. She said, I have never heard of anything or saw anything that even named AIDS. I have never seen AIDS or nothing like that. So her conclusion was, well, I have seen people sick with other things that the World Health Organization and the people over there diagnosed as AIDS. But I never saw AIDS. So, when they dropped this correction, oh, there was an oil spill over there in Nigeria. And they got permanent oil spill. It, it, it spills all the time. So what they did is they dropped this correction. They dropped this correction over there. And the people started dying. Let me see. It was 70. On the continent, 70. 75,000 a month. And they was calling it AIDS. Over here was just giving you AZT, calling it AIDS. If you had money, like Magic Johnson, you see what I'm saying? They don't give you the AZT. And you so fat now, his head looked like he swallowed the fucking basketball. <laughs> So that's a whole politics thing. That's a germ warfare or AZT poison. So anyway, when it comes to this correction and stuff, once that happened in Africa, they banned it in Europe and in England. And now they dropped it overseas here. And it's going to really kill melanated people and a lot of white people. Because a lot of white people, gene pools is all mixed up. You see, just like uh, 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 Paul Mooney said, you shake a white person family tree and a nigga will fall. <laughs> So that's called, you know, so that's what's going on with that. Now, with the diet, what had happened was I had entered into this anti-
angelic reign, the Neteru reign. And I entered into this realm, but I had all this stuff in me based on the diet. And the side effects of being in that realm, I had a more mucus and more stuff like that because it was contrasting in a realm where you got to be pure. So, in order to get the full effect on this thing to lock into this realm, I had to go on a fast for three weeks and burn all that off and then kill off all that and get all that animal stuff up out of there and stuff to lock into this particular realm. You see what I'm saying? So, uh, uh, lock into this realm. Now, let me go into some other things. Because what we're talking about here is the day when they killed Troy Davis, first of all, they killed him on the equinox. So the government's equinox is the 21st. The spiritual community is the 22nd and the 23rd. But they give the 21st because they don't want people focusing on the real day, which is the 22nd or the 23rd. So they lock it in as the 21st. But they killed him on the 21st. And they killed him close to the 22nd. You know, they killed the other guy that drove the boy down the street. The guy down the street killed him on the same day. You see, these are rituals. These are rituals that's going on. You see. Now, so what happens here is, now we, we, we gotta do this thing here, this, we gotta do this. I have to do this. If your child makes any noise that's going on that camera, and the people all over this country will call me and curse me out. So you got to leave the building, you got to go to the back room or whatever and stuff like that. That's the policy based on if you was in CNN, we was on Pierce Morgan tonight, you wouldn't have no baby crying. That's the, that's the rules and stuff like that. You see what I'm saying? You know, on that thing. I got a bat. I got a tape with you. She is at the top of her game. But half the shit you can't hear because they have a damn baby crying. And she didn't know the protocol, man. This is information that's coming down with our people. You see what I'm saying? And they might be cute and all that kind of stuff here. But no, you gotta go to that exercise in that other room and stuff like that. I had it once that happened to me on the second or third lecture I did, and people cursed me out for 10 years. <laughs> so, you, got, you know, so the baby can't, you know, you take it, you know, whatever. But anyway, going back to oh, what was I? What was I on? Huh? What what on the ritual, Troy Davis. Troy Davis. Now, um, they killed this brother, but what I did was, and everybody was calling, people was calling the house, you gonna go down to the state house and more? I'm like, hell, I ain't going to no damn state house and more. I said, what I'm gonna do, I said, I'm gonna go into celebration. I said, y'all got it wrong. Let's say this brother gets a stay of execution. He's got to go back and get locked up in the cell for another 20 years. He is getting ready to join the party in the gods. So we had a jam session. We had a jam session. See, I got this system. So I got, I got a system that they come in through Canada. They don't even allow, see, see, they tell you, see, they don't even have 100 watts in this country. Used to have them in the 70s. They're, they're getting 40 watts and call it 100. But I got a system that came in through Canada. It's 780 watts, it's almost 800 watts. So, when you play this, let's say if I put on, let's say if I put on Billy Holiday, she literally comes to the house. <laughs> you put on Bob Marley, she literally comes to the house. That's how powerful this system is now. So we started jamming the music on, they call it on, I'll tell you today, we don't, it's called May Day. That's, that's called, what's that's called in um, the Wiccan? The Wiccan call it, um, what they call it? The Wiccans call it, it's May Day. Beltane. But we put on Beltane and we started jamming some music and mess around and put on Tina Marie. So she came to the house. She said, you have to play all my shit. <laughs> I had to dig, I had to find out. 
Luckily, I, I, you know, I found about five or six of her albums. We had to play, we had to play a damn metal. I'm like, shit. She came, she came right straight there. Now, but that's what, but that's what it is when it comes to LPs. Most of you got rid of your LPs, but there's a way around this thing. Anybody still have stereo systems? Okay, this is what you do. The CD don't come with certain octaves, so it don't hit the inner ear melody. But this is what you got to do. This is what you have to do. It came out with a CD player in the late 80s. They discontinued albums around 1990. They started shutting and phasing them out. And then they started giving most of the CD players made in the 80s, I mean, in the 90s. And it's made so that the, that the music don't hit the inner ear. No. So this is what you got to do. This is what you got to do. Now, the technology from 2000 on up, things change. So what you got to do, if you got a stereo system, is to get you a DVD player. And look on the DVD player and see whether it has Dolby Digital. It might have seven different uh, systems on it to read those DVDs. So let's say if you get a Sony DVD player or a Panasonic DVD player from like 1994 on up, or 1995 on, two, no, two, 2004, 2005 on up, where you look and they got MP3, they got Dolby Digital, they got this, they got, might have five different systems on it. Look, venues. You want to take that and plug it to your auxiliary of your, of, of your amp, or of, of your, of your, of your, if you got one that was made in the 2000s, you plug it into your, 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 your amp or your, your receiver and you turn it on DVD. And what it does is it puts back the stuff that they took out and it makes it equivalent to an album. And so this stuff enters the inner ear melody. Because the other day we was playing some house music. And most of the house we got on DVD. And so my girl, she goes and put on her Capizio shoes, those the dancer shoes. And she'll go in and start dancing. But we played it on the regular CD player. And the music could only, she could only feel the music in her legs. And so I said, I got a remedy for that. So the next day I hooked up the DVD player and then she started feeling it in her arms and the whole thing just went to a certain level. So that's what you want to do. Now the people that don't have the stuff, if, okay, let's say if you got a boom box or you got an MP3 or you got anything like that, what you want to do, or you got any, any, any small device, what you want to do to get the stuff to enter the inner ear melody is you want to get a set of headphones. It costs about $100. They're called Sony. Professionals. It's two, you want to get professional studio headphones. It's a red and blue symbol on it. And it costs about a hundred. That's how you know a professional. But it'll have on the box professional. And anytime you see people in the studio, they'll either have on the Sony professionals or they have a, 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 it's a, it's a group from Germany. It start with a C or an E. It's a German group. It, huh? Huh? Start, starts with an S. The German ones with the S are the Sony Professional. So let's say if you got an a MP3 player, or if you got a, a um, any little device that you want to put on, or a regular boombox, anything you play CDs on. And you don't have a regular big system. You want to get you some professional Sony, it says Sony Professional. This is the ones that they have to use. They have to use professional headphones in the studios because there's certain octaves and certain things they got to hear. Because if you don't hear it in the studio once they record it, you might be like, I didn't hear this shit. That shit is fucked up. <laughs> so you will see them. It's Sony professional. So the people that have these small devices, you can still get around it. Let's say you got an MP3 or let's say you got a regular Walkman or Sony or a DVD Walkman. You can still get around it. You just got to go and go to a place. You have to have a guitar shop up here. Mm -hmm. yeah. They sell the one. They sell the one with the S. Just go on and say, I want studio professional headphones. 
And be prepared to spend a hundred dollars. Remember, my mama said, you always pay for what you get in this country. That's why white people should be right. <laughs> the white people, money in your office, they get the best stuff. So you, you want to, but, okay, cool, cool. So what you want to do, what you want to do is, you want to get the Sony professionals if you don't have a, a system. Now, if you got a system, who them Sony professionals, put them on. You see what I'm saying? But if you're just walking around and you got a regular little piece of shit boombox, it could be an Emerson, it don't matter. The Sony professionals will put the octaves back in. And anytime you see people in the studio, they got on professional headphones. And those will put it, because what you want to do, you want the music to enter the inner ear melody. Inner ear melody. Now, for the warfare, you just in the rap. You want to play as much early rap as you can. That means rap from the 1980s up to about 2000. Or up to about a time when they killed Tupac or Biggie. That was the time when they, was, when they killed them two people. That was the time when they started doing shit even worse. So even the people with the rap, if you into the rap, compared to the stuff now, if you put on some rap in 1990, if you put on Run DMC, They'll sound like fucking Perry Como or Lawrence Welk. Or Dizzy Gillespie compared to the shit that they're doing now. The stuff they're doing now is disruptive. You see what I'm saying? So you want to get any class, so any classical. So you got classical rap, you got classical funk. You see what I'm saying? You got classical jazz. So you just get uh, uh, any kind of stuff like that. Any kind of stuff like that. Now, this is another thing you want to deal with. You want to deal with 70s fusion funk jazz. We talk about Herbie Hancock, 70s jazz, Weather Report, 70s jazz. Any 70s jazz, Miles Davis, Bitches Brew. Because what Miles Davis did is he changed the game up on their ass. Miles Davis said, this old shit is dead. You see, after Jimi Hendrix and Sly Stone, he was like, no, fuck that, this shit is dead. So he went to the electric mines. And all the other jazz artists after him had to follow. He's the one that actually stopped them. Because see, see, there's certain music that go in certain cycles. And once that cycle passed, you see what I'm saying? Once that cycle passed, Yeah, once that cycle pass, um, we'll, 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 we'll take it out after I do my infomercial. And they can get this stuff. After the cycle pass, then what happens here is um, that music is no longer affected. So a new genre has to come out. So what Miles did, he made this 70s fusion jazz that most white people couldn't play. It took them years. And then they had to break it on down to spiral gyro and stuff like that until they could get back into it. And the music industry had to, you know, tell them uh, 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 Kroger Washington to do some fucking wine like. <laughs> Compared to Mr. Magic, it was commercial peace. So any 70s jazz, you see what I'm saying, where they, where they had that funk incorporated into it. The government had to, they had to really go against that. They had to try to shut that down. So what they started doing was telling the traditional people that to frown upon that. They could, they could frown upon it because the white people couldn't play it at first. Because it involved the funk. And when you deal with the funk, the funk is melanin put to scale. It's time you deal with the funk. Even Cornell West, his first book, he, he talking about Boosie Collins and Frankie Beverly and Mays in his first book. That was in the 80s. And even now, Boosie got a, a new album. He got Cornel West. He even got Jesse Jackson up in that motherfucker. Like, it's about the form. <laughs> you with you, Jesse. <laughs> <laughs> you know, stuff like that. So, uh, so any, any kind of thing, but deal with your classes. But the thing is, in order to 
grades up, you're going to get to the inner ear melody. And you can only do it. LPs can do it. If you do a CD, try to hook it up to a DVD player. But if you don't have none of that stuff, get you some professional headphones. <laughs>